Hey everyone, it's Jared. You might remember me as Dark Horse for Life, Blitzcrank Connoisseur, Mobile Game Devotee, and Game Director for Wild Rift. We're moving on from our Power Spike patch into our next update, but there's definitely no powering down here. Today we'll be talking about our next champions, improvements to the jungling experience, rune and item changes, a new game mode, and more. So let's jump into the Wild Rift patch 3.5, Darken to Dawn. Aatrox, the Darkened Blade, brings oblivion to Baron Lane. An ancient being imprisoned in his own sword, Aatrox feasts on the souls of mortals to grow ever more powerful. To take down opponents, Aatrox wants to land his first ability, the Darkened Blade, one after the other. This ability transforms on each cast, targeting a different area. Then, drag them down with your second ability, Infernal Chains. Once they're in your grasp, unleash apocalyptic power with your ultimate, World Ender which unlocks a ton of bonus attack damage, healing, and move speed. These buffs are extended by takedowns so you can keep the fight going. At the height of his potential, Aatrox is a true force of devastation. If Unkillable Raid Boss is your dream, pick him up and rain destruction down on your enemies. If you're looking for an even sharper edge, our next champ is for you. Kane, the Shadow Reaper, slices into the rift and anything in his way. With his third ability, Shadow Step, this jungler can walk through walls, and his ultimate, Umbral Trespass, allows him to hide in an enemy's body, dealing massive damage when you escape. Kane wields an ancient weapon possessed by a Darken, named Rost, and constantly battles it for control. With his passive, the Darken Scythe, you decide who will triumph. When Kane attacks champions, he'll charge each of his forms. Ranged champions charge the Shadow Assassin, while melee champions charge the Darken Slayer. When one form is fully charged, he can permanently gain its bonuses by selecting it in the Fountain. This choice can't be changed later in the game, so make sure you're confident. In Darken form, Kane will heal for the damage he deals to champions, making him harder to kill. In Assassin form, Kane will deal even more damage, allowing him to burst down enemies before they can blink. His abilities will also slightly change depending on the form you choose. So, if you're an aspiring Kane main, get ready to transform and embrace a new path. Hmm, what's that? Are you feeling sleepy? Maybe our next champ will be a breath of fresh air. Lilia, the bashful bloom, emerges from a peaceful forest far away into the jungle of Wild Rift. This shy fawn spirit collects and protects the dreams of humans, kind of the opposite of Darken and destruction. But don't underestimate her skittish appearance. Her speed and damage might spook even the soundest sleeper. All of Lilia's abilities apply Dream Dust, which deals max health damage over time. When she hits at least one champion with an ability, she'll gain move speed, which stacks with more hits. Land your spells and you'll be zooming across the map. Lilia's ultimate, Lilting Lullaby, puts all champions affected by Dream Dust to sleep after a delay. They'll wake up when they take damage from your team, so make that time in Dreamland count. If dealing huge AoE damage is more your super fast speed, Lilia is your jungler to fawn over. And that's all of our champions for the Darkened to Dawn update. Let us know if you found the perfect new main. Hi everyone, I'm David, Associate Game Director on Wild Rift. You'll find me as Papa Smoothie on the Rift and on socials. Now, let's get into our gameplay updates. Over the last couple patches, we made updates for the support role, and we feel pretty good about where they landed so far. This means that in patch Dark into Dawn, we're looking to make meaningful improvements to another role, the jungle. Jungling is one of the most challenging roles in Wild Rift. It plays very differently compared to all the other roles, and has a ton of agency over the course of the game. Now, we expect the jungle role to remain high depth and high impact. But in 3.5, we're looking to remove some unnecessary complexity from the experience while maintaining all the epic moments. Starting this patch, you'll be able to use the buff sharing mechanic. Blue and red buffs are incredibly powerful tools and sometimes cause unnecessary tension between teammates as to who should get them. We're adding a mechanic where after a few minutes of game time, killing the Brambleback or the Sentinel will drop a temporary buff that other players can pick up by walking up to the buff circle. Sharing is caring, folks, so don't let it go to waste. Since you have double the buffs for your team, the evolved versions of blue and red 
will be removed. We also have a new jungler specific buff called Conservation. When you jungle, you'll gain conservation stacks over time, and killing a large monster will cash in the stacks for gold. This buff is meant to provide a natural guidance for junglers on how they should balance between ganking and farming. Basically, if you only farm or only gank, you'll be missing out on that bonus gold. We're updating the Smite Summoner spell. First, we're removing Challenging Smite, or Red Smite. We found that it really wasn't a compelling choice for jungle players, and it was often hard to appreciate its effect in-game. Next, we're changing how the Smite upgrade functions. Originally, you had to kill a specific amount of monsters to upgrade your Smite. Starting this patch, Smite will upgrade based on the number of times it has been used, so the upgrade time should be more consistent across games. Additionally, both base Smite and the upgraded Smite will deal a fixed amount of damage to monsters instead of scaling based on your champion level. Lastly, we're adjusting the general stats and behavior of jungle monsters. This should help make clear times faster overall, and you should have an easier time surviving against monsters, especially in the early clears. Because at the end of the day, we want junglers to be planning their next steps without worrying so much about surviving their initial clears. Another big change I want to call out is the first camp start decision. Previously, it was almost necessary for junglers to start at the red buff to maximize their clear speed. With the general updates to monster stats, we hope the first clear decisions can be more dynamic and flexible so that players can choose which camp to start based on the unique dynamics of their specific matchup. We're making some awesome improvements to Shelly as well. Rift Herald is meant to be a mid-game tool that helps you snowball, but with its current tuning, oftentimes the expected rewards can vary greatly. So we have increased the speed of summoning Rift Herald as well as her charge speed, so the value gained from your plays will be that much more consistent. Horizon Focus is a great pick for mages who want to snipe opponents with spells. Skill shots that hit a champion from a distance will apply stacks to your enemy. Hidden crowd control abilities will grant additional stacks, gain enough stacks to consume them and deal bonus damage. Get your sniper goggles on and sharpen up your aim. Lord Dominic's Regards is our newest attack damage item. With his passive Adrenaline, after you're out of combat with other champions for a few seconds, your first attack against a champion will now have increased attack speed. Soul Stealer is getting a new passive, Soul Flare. Takedowns on enemy champions will reduce the cooldowns on all your basic abilities, and you'll gain extra ability power for a few seconds after. So if you're a mage or assassin player who likes to snowball your way through team fights, this is the item for you. For runes, we want to give mages another option beyond Electrocute and Summonary, with some utility beyond just dealing extra damage. So if you want to run fast and cast fast, Phase Rush is the room for you. When you hit a champion with three separate attacks or abilities, you'll gain a burst of movement speed and ability haste. Your current cooldowns will also be reduced, so get spell slain. We're also replacing the champion room. Sudden Impact is your new pick if you're looking to twist a knife while you assassinate your enemies. With this room, you'll gain a bit of adaptive penetration when you exit stealth or use a dash, blink, or teleport to deal damage to an enemy champion. We're introducing another game mode this patch. If you ever wonder what a game of five Blitzcranks and five Threshes will look like, well now's your chance to find out. That's right, one for all is coming to Wild Rift. In Champion Select, you and your teammates will vote for a champion to play, and you'll all play the selected champion. Ties are broken by random selection. The enemy team will select their own champion to play, and then you all be in a game of never done before combos. So queue up and tell us who's the most OP. We will love to hear what you think. We have a few new features to address disruptive behavior in games. We'll be adding another penalty for players who leave matches. As we know, playing with an AFK player is not fun. So we're looking to discourage that behavior even more. Additionally, when in a situation where a remake is available, the remake will automatically trigger, so you cannot miss the vote. You'll also see a new avoid list feature in this patch. 
In the post-game lobby, you'll be able to add someone from the game to your avoid list, which will prevent you from being matched on the same team with them until the list resets at the start of each week. We're adding a new way to view your skins. When you visit the collection tab, you'll see the skin set tab and the champion tab. With these filters, you'll be able to view multiple skins for the same champion or skin lines at once. Some will even have custom backgrounds. If you complete an entire skin set, you'll earn an exclusive title and a special effect in Champion Select to show it off. So for those of you who like to build your collection, you have a new way to admire it with pride. Lastly, during this update's events, you'll see some brand new mission types. We'll talk a little more about that later. Now, I'll pass it back to Jared to wrap us up. Bam! Pow! Kaboom! Oh, sorry, I got a little carried away there. You can't have superheroes without supervillains. This patch, Super Villain Jin brings his nefarious deeds to level 50 of the Wild Pass. You can claim his ascended skin by playing games and collecting it from the Wild Pass Emporium. Will the forces of good or evil win out? Only future Wild Passes will tell. We hope you enjoyed powering up in the Supreme Cells Arena last patch. Of course, we've got a bunch of new events for you to explore in this update. Most importantly, have you been having strange dreams lately? Filled with peculiar and playful characters? Who live in a beautiful, mysterious world not too far from our own? No? Just me? Weird. Spirit Blossom is coming to Wild Rift. In this event, you'll tend to a little town in the spirit world, where completing missions will let you summon a random spirit. Fill up your town with this cast of quirky personalities, and who knows what you might overhear. To go into the new year, we've got a festive little snowball fight for you. Test your aim and collect rewards fit for a Poro. Don't worry, no Poros will be harmed as you complete your missions. Look how happy they are! And of course, that's not all the events we're looking forward to. So keep an eye out for more in the next couple months. And it wouldn't be a patch preview without our skins montage. Let's take a look at what's coming from elegant to edgy to extra colorful. Roll montage. And that's everything for this update. Whether you're in the mood for darkness and destruction or a dreamy trip to the spirit world, we've got you covered in the Darken to Dawn patch. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you on the Rift.